Good morning. My name is Ahmed Mustafa, lecturer of cardiology, the cardiology department at Ain Shams University. Uh, today I'll be explaining the basics of local cardiac examination for the clinical cardiovascular module. First, uh, regarding the position of the patient, you must be lying comfortable in bed. Remember, if your patient is orthopnic, you must raise the head of the bed until the patient is comfortable during examination. Stand on the right of the patient and greet him. Zahaik al Akbar. Regarding the exposure, the patient must be exposed from the head and down to the umbilicus. First, I look tangentially from the foot side of the bed and checking for precordial bulge. The precordial bulge refers to right ventricular enlargement that happened during the childhood. And then again, I look tangentially from the right side of the bed. What am I checking for? First, I'm checking for the precordial bulge, as I mentioned. Presence of scars. There are two scars that we should be familiar with. First, the midline sternotomy scar for the open heart surgery, which is not here. It's for the cabbage and the valve surgery. And another scar, which is present here, the left submammary incision. That's that one, the left submammary incision. This was the one was done for closed mitral commissurotomy or closed mitral valve surgery. Other things to look for are dilated veins and the location of the apex. And the apex is the downwardmost, outwardmost pulsations, which is not visible here. Then I move to palpation. First, I confirm the site of the apex. How do I do this? Put my hands in the mid-clavicular line and trying to localize the apex. After I localize the apex, I start. I, I check the, the, the position. It usually is in the fifth space in the mid-clavicular line. How do I do this? I slide my hands from the suprasternal notch downward to the manubrium sterni to the angle of Lewis. From the angle of Lewis, I slide my left hand slightly to the left. Now I'm in the level of the second space. And then I count the intercostal space. This is the third, the fourth, and the fifth. So the apex here is in the fifth space in the mid-clavicular line. Then I check the, the, the apex for palpable thrill. And thrill is a vibratory sensation on the skin that underlies and overlies an area of turbulence. It usually associates murmurs, the loud ones, okay? Then uh, I check for the, the apex for a special character. Usually the, the, the apex give, gives a gentle tap. To check more for the character, I may ask the patient to lean a little to the left. Okay. Then I continue my examination by examining the base of the heart. Again, I slide my hand from the manubrium sterni downwards to the angle of Lewis. From there, I slide my hand slightly to the left, my right hand. This is the medial end of the right second space or the pulmonary area. I check for palpable pulsations. Then again, from the angle of Lewis, I slide my hand to the right. This is the medial end of the right second space, the aortic area. I check for pulsations. And then with the palm of the hand and the, and the fingers, I check both areas for palpable thrill. From there, I slide slightly downwards and to the left by the palms of the metacarpals, checking for the pulsations in the left parasternal area. And then with the palms of the fingers, I check the epigastric area for pulsations. Normally, there is minimal pulsations that comes from posterior to anterior coming from the abdominal aorta. Then I move for auscultation. We have to bear in mind in auscultation that we assess first presence of heart sounds. The first and the second are normally present, but the third and fourth, they shouldn't be here. They are not normally present. And the additional sounds like pericardial friction rub, um, the, the ejection click and the valvular clicks, and at, at last, the murmurs. Uh, another thing that we should bear in mind that uh, the auscultatory areas are different from the surface anatomy of the valves. We do not auscultate the valves at their anatomical site. Let me give you an example. The mitral valve, surface anatomy is at the level of the fourth rib at the uh, behind the left end of the sternum. However, when we auscultate the, the mitral valve, we auscultate at the apex. And this is because the blood, the sound is transmitted with the blood. The blood transmits the vibrations from the opening and closure and movement of the valves with the bloodstream. So we auscultate where the sound is transmitted and not where the anatomical site of the valve is. So how do I start auscultation? First, I start with auscultation of the apex. I assess here for the presence of the third and the fourth heart sound, which if present, they would be on the apex. 
and then I move to the medial end of the right second space or the first aortic area. Then I move my stethoscope to the medial end of the left second space or the pulmonary area with comparing the intensity of the second heart sound here and here. Normally, the second heart sound intensity over the aortic area is louder than the pulmonary area because the pulmonary component, first, it's uh, soft and it is not auscultated anywhere over the pericordium except over the pulmonary area. So how do I get it or assess it? I tell that I put the stethoscope on the pulmonary area and instruct the patient to take a deep inspiration. مش خد نفس جامد واكتمه. Here I can auscultate by this maneuver. I can auscultate the two components of the second heart sound, the aortic component, which precedes the pulmonary component during inspiration by around 30 milliseconds. From the pulmonary area, I move down to the third space, the medial end of the left third space, which is the second aortic area. Then I move downwards to the medial end of the left fifth space, which is the tricuspid area. So, in summary, the normal cardiac examination, there, there is no scars or dilated veins, no precordial bulge, and the apex should be in the fifth space in the midclavicular line, with no visible pulsations or palpable thrills, and no special character. Regarding auscultation, the first and second heart sound are normal. There has to be some degree of splitting over the pulmonary area for the second heart sound, it's called the physiological splitting. The third and fourth heart sounds are not normally auscultated, they are not there, but if they are, they should be, they should be heard on the apex, and there is no additional sounds as clicks or friction rubs, and there is no murmurs. And that's all, thank you.